Hi everyone, my name is Brandy. I am the owner and artisan behind Brush by Brandy and welcome back for another video on my YouTube channel. This week we're going to be working on this piece that's behind me. So this is an empire style dresser and I love the empire style. It's so beautiful and classic uh, with its uh, chunky carved legs and this week we're going to be using Annie Sloan chalk paint and I'm super excited to use this paint with you. This was actually one of the first paints that I used as a painter so I kind of grew up on this and it's a beautiful beautiful paint to use. Uh, we're going to be doing some layering with this paint. Um, I'm going to be sticking in the greens and the blues and I think we're going to really build up some cool textures and then really emphasize them with some waxes. Um, I enjoy any Sloan chalk paint. It is the original chalk paint and uh, I like the longevity in the paint. I find that when I use it, I don't have to use as much water. It's got beautiful coverage. You can get textures or smooth finishes with this. So it's a really nice paint to work in and I'm kind of excited to get a little bit back to my roots. So um, thank you to Annie Sloan and let's go ahead and take this uh, Empire style piece from the before to the after. And this isn't even our finished look, you guys, so stick with me. Here's where I started on this piece and it's actually in remarkably good condition. At some point, someone had tried to refinish this by coating it in about a million coats of clear lacquer. So the clear coat on this is incredibly thick. I do love that their refinishing effort preserved some of this beautiful wood grain and it let me know that I wanted to include some wood grain on this final finish. I started out by removing the knobs from this. These are old wooden knobs. I don't think I'm going to be reusing them, so I went ahead and put them in my stash. And then I'm going to give this one a good cleaning using TSP. TSP is trisodium phosphate. It's a heavy duty cleaner that you can get at the hardware store. It just dissolves into water, and so I dissolve it in my spray bottle, and then I can use it to clean my piece. Next, I'm going to give this a thorough scuff sanding. All of those thick layers of clear coat have a glossy finish on them, so I want to give it some tooth so that my paint bites onto it. Um, I did tape off this line. I originally thought that I wanted to leave the top on this as wood, but I changed my mind a little bit later. You'll see that. Then I went ahead and applied um, two coats of light gray primer from Wiseal. I'm loving this primer, you guys. It's a stain blocker and a gripping primer all in one. It goes on beautifully, and I love painting over the top of it. It makes your paint go on super smooth. I also knew that I wanted to do a layered finish on this one, and so this light gray primer actually ends up being an asset to me in this finish. My base coat over the top of my primer on this is pretty basic. I'm using Annie Sloan Graphite, Avacon Blue, Amsterdam Green, and Furl. I'm brushing these on using my S50 from Klingon, and I'm just putting them in kind of random places, making sure that my lightest color goes towards the center, so they kind of graduate from my darkest color on the outer edges to the lighter in the center. Brush strokes are actually really good on this coat. I actually want them to show through on my next coat, so I'm going to make sure that I leave brush strokes and kind of unevenness in this base coat. For my next coat, I'm going to go over the top of those kind of wild colors that I had applied as my messy base, and I'm going to apply a coat of Svenska Blue. And this is a soft, pale blue from Annie Sloan. I'm using a lot of water, so it's nice and pale, and my underneath colors show through. This is almost a color wash except for that I'm not going to wipe it back. I just go ahead and blend it in and then I add a little bit of my underneath colors to bring them back through to make sure there's some um, uneven places where they're still saturated. I kept the legs of my piece nice and dark in that graphite color and then I'm going to go ahead and work a little bit of that in from the corners to make sure that that stays nice and dark. I'm laying this coat on using a synthetic bristle flat brush from Posh Chalk. I like the way this holds in my hands and it lets me flick these nice light coats with a lot of brush strokes and texture in them. I really used one brush for this entire coat and I just alternated. I let my brush get kind of muddy and it created these awesome in-between colors too. I love Annie Sloan paint for how it layers. It layers spectacularly. It's one of my favorite things about this paint. You can lay the paint on as soft and light as you want or as dark and saturated as you want and get these really amazing areas of layers and textures in your paint. Let's go ahead and get this base coat finished up. I'm just going to be using the same four colors I used in my base coat and then that little bit of Svenska blue over the top to soften them out.
Here's where I landed at the end of my second coat. You can see that layer of Svenska blue over the top really soften those bold colors out. So you'll remember at the beginning of this video, I originally told you that I love the wood grain on this piece and I wanted to leave some of it in natural wood. Well, I changed my mind and I love this paint finish so much, I decided to carry it up onto these top two drawers. So I went ahead and put my coat of primer on there and now I'm gonna repeat my base coat up onto the top two drawers. This shows you again how irregular that base coat is. I'm just applying the colors in kind of a random order. I'm using one brush so it gets nice and muddy. My colors get kind of mixed. Um, and layered and you get all these in-between tones um, and I'm just going to work across leaving those lightest areas in the center. While these top two drawers are drying and I'm waiting to get them caught up to the rest of the body, I did decide that I want to add a little bit more irregularity to the bottom of this piece. I'm going to add a little bit more of that Svenska blue and I'm going to layer it with some more of my base color so that those pop through and are more saturated in areas and then I actually came back and I took a rag and I'm going to lay off some of that Svenska so it has this kind of irregular finish. Um, it ended up being very pretty where I wiped the paint back in some areas and it left them lighter and other areas were darker. You can see how it starts to create this cloudiness in the paint but I still have the aura of those under layers peeking through. With my paint finish right where I like it, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this stencil over the top of my raw paint. This stencil is from Redesign with Prima. I love it. It's got this sort of uh, rough age lace pattern, and I'm just using a little bit of Annie Sloan Old White and a Redesign with Prima Natural Bristle Brush. I'm applying it lightly over the top of my stencil using a circular motion. I've just taped my stencil in place. I don't have any stencil adhesive on it, and I'm letting my stencil go on kind of irregular, a little bit darker in areas and lighter in some so that it looks worn like my paint finish. It's kind of funny because I originally pictured for this piece a really aged farmhouse finish and I was going to keep my paint finish a little more clean. Um, only when I started doing this paint finish, it took on a life of its own and I loved the combination of the colors with the wash over the top. It almost became more of a bohemian finish and so I went with it. It's a little bit of an aged bohemian farmhouse finish, we'll call it. The name of this stencil is called Distress Wallpaper and I've linked it in the description for this post. I find that I go through phases in my furniture design where I like to use different products more um, at some times than others. Um, in this case, I'm definitely in a stencil phase. I'm loving stencils. I'm finding all these new amazing stencils. This is one that's new to my collection. Um, sometimes I tend to use transfers more than others, but I'm definitely going through a stencil phase right now. Sometimes it's hard to wait while you're stenciling because you really want to get to the end where you get to pull the stencil back and reveal your pattern. Well, here it is. And then I picked my stencil up and I went ahead and repeated over onto the second side. Once I had my two stencil placements down, I went ahead and took the drawers out and I completed my stencil placement all the way to the edges of my drawer so there was no abrupt stop. You'll also notice that I'm actually applying the stencil upside down. So I flipped my stencil upside down because the top edge of this stencil was a little too tall. It ran into those top drawers and I wanted to butt it right up against the top. Um, and so using it upside down worked better for me. So don't hesitate to play with the placement of your stencil to work with your piece. So this stencil ends up looking like a very aged and worn lace in the white pattern against my bright colors. Um, I think it was a beautiful aged accent to this piece. It makes it look even more elaborate. So you remember where I decided to go ahead and prime the top of this piece thinking that I wanted to paint it? Well, I changed my mind again. And so what does that lead to? I need to strip the top, but I would have needed to strip it anyway because remember it has those millions of layers of clear coat under here too. So now I'm just gonna strip a layer of primer with it. Um, I'm using Jasco Stripper, which is one of my favorites to use. It's the most effective. It does smell terrible. You wanna wear gloves with it, um, but eco-friendly strippers tend to just be less effective and take more coats. And so I prefer to just go for the harsh chemical stuff. 
So how do I decide if I'm going to chemically strip versus sand to strip a piece of wood? Well, the answer is that I usually do a test spot. So I'll pick a corner, I'll take my surf prep sander and an 80 grit paper, and I'm gonna see how quickly it cuts through the clear coat. If it goes pretty quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with my sander. But in this case, remember it's got those millions of layers of clear coat on it. It would have taken me forever to sand this down to the raw wood so that I know that I need to employ a chemical stripper. One misconception with chemical stripper is that it's used in place of sanding. It's not. It's always in addition to sanding. So this is not going to save me any time um, sanding wise other than I'm not going to have to sand through all those layers of clear coat. I am still going to have to sand this down to the raw wood. Um, I'm just using a metal spatula and I'm scraping back all of the gunk. My first coat of the stripper only got my layer of um, primer and so I know that I'm going to need to reapply to get through all those layers of clear coat. I'm just scraping it all onto a piece of cardboard. I'll discard this when I'm done. Um, this is my second coat here, and this is gonna get me closer to my raw wood. I apply my chemical stripper. I brush it over the top of my piece. I'm just using an inexpensive chip brush to spread it out. I'm gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna scrape it. You can see this beautiful wood grain is starting to show through and finally see what all this effort is for. It's definitely worth it, and I got through all this clear coat. Once my stripper is all off, before I can sand this, I need to neutralize my wood stripper. I gave it a wipe down with a mist of 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and water. I let my wood dry out overnight to make sure it's nice and dry from the stripper and the vinegar that I sprayed on it. And now I can come back and I can sand it using an 80 grit, 120 and 220. It got this top perfectly smooth. I decided to go ahead and protect my finish using wax from Annie Sloan and I've missed Annie Sloan waxes so much you guys I love her waxes they are soft as butter they protect really well and I love the soft light sheen that they leave on so I'm going to massage this into my raw paint I'm just using a natural bristle wax brush I'm using a circular motion and I'm going to rub it in and then of course you have to touch it with your hands because wax has the most tactile feel ever and then I come back with a, a rag and I'm just going to buff it away. Annie Sloan paint really comes alive when you wax it. Those oil-based waxes soak into the paint. When you buff away the excess, it just makes those colors ever more saturated um, and your finishes really show through. Waxing is an arm workout. There's a circular motion of applying the wax with a brush and then the circular motion of coming back and buffing it away. Um, you will feel this in your arm when you're done, but it's totally worth it because the finish of it is like no other. The nice thing about a wax finish is you can come back and just reapply wax periodically however often you choose to and it will revive that finish. For the top of this piece I am going to use a clear coat and that's just because I prefer the protection of clear coat on the Let's spend some time on these drawer sides. So they're a little rough. I came back and gave them a light sanding using my surf prep sander and a 120 grit paper. This just evened out the tone of the wood. I painted the edges of my drawer sides using an artist brush and Annie Sloan graphite and then I'm going to go ahead and apply an Annie Sloan stencil to the sides of my drawers. It's this kind of floral with a little bit of a barbed wire look to it. It feels very in keeping with the style of this piece. I'm using one of the uh, stencil brushes from Redesign with Prima and a little bit of my graphite paint. Very little paint on my brush and a circular motion over the top of this stencil and it applies perfectly. When I pull the stencil back, it reveals the pattern, and these are just going to peek out the sides of my drawers when they open just a little bit. This stencil is the perfect size for drawer sides. All of my painted finishes are done on this one, and I'm ready for some finishing touches. Hardware is like jewelry for furniture, so I'm going to pay attention to my poles. My piece came with some really plain and ugly wooden knobs. Now I've done some things with these that you can dress them up by adding paint and sometimes molds and they do come out pretty cool. But I'm actually gonna go in a different direction with these so these wood knobs are gonna go in my stash. What I plan to do with this piece is I'm gonna be adding these pretty glass drop knobs and they're really pretty but they were kind of simple on their own and so I wanna kinda of make them more elaborate. There's nothing more fancy for um, a piece than adding really elaborate vintage looking hardware. This one doesn't have it so I'm gonna make some myself. So I'm going to use Amazing Casting Resin from Alumalite and I put mine into FIFO bottles and these are a lifesaver. Um, so it comes in two parts, a part A and a part B. I'm gonna mix them in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm first gonna take one part and I'm just using a little medicine cup here. I get these at the dollar store. And I'm gonna put that into my 
measuring cup and then I'm going to do the same ratio of the second part, put that into my measuring cup. I'm going to stir these together and you can only stir this for about 30 seconds I would say. It's going to start setting up fairly quickly. I'm using a silicone cup and a silicone stirrer and that way nothing will stick to them. And then I'm going to use a uh, mold from Redesign with Prima and this one's called Tulum Keyholes and I'm going to make this one and this one here and I should have enough for two of these keyholes. So fairly quickly I'm going to pour this into my mold. This resin sets up in about 10 minutes and so I don't have a whole lot of working time so I want to make sure that I get it poured in my molds otherwise I will end up with a beautiful cast of my cup. Once it's in there, this is a very intricate mold, so I'm just going to make sure that I push it into all the details of my mold. And then we are going to let this set up. I have a couple air bubbles in there I'm just going to pop. Got one little area it didn't get into. So I just guide it using a tool. Um, anything with a sharp tip on it will work. And we're going to let this set up. This video sped up about 12 times, but as you watch the resin, you can start to see when it turns white. That's the chemical reaction starting to happen. This process is a heat reaction. It will happen faster in warmer weather, but you can see as those white spots start to grow, that's my resin starting to cure. Once it's fully white, then I'll know that it's ready to remove from my mold. Even when it turns fully white, the resin can remain a little bit soft, and so you can go back and just feel the backside of it to see if it's ready to remove from the mold. I usually flex my silicone a little bit and see if it starts pulling away at the edges, and that will tell me pretty quickly if it's ready to come out. You can see here I flex my mold and they're not ready to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a second mold while I wait for these to keep curing. I'm just going to repeat my process and pour a couple of these smaller keyhole molds. I'm going to use these on the top drawer of my piece. This is just a repeat of the initial process. I'm going to mix equal parts of A and B, stir for about 30 seconds, pour it into my mold, and then use a sharp edge that I can push it into the edges of the mold. While I let this newest pour set up, let's go ahead and go back and check our original molds. Still probably a little soon, but if I work my mold enough, I can go ahead and force these out. They're a little soft, so I could have waited a few minutes longer. When you first remove your resin from the molds, they're incredibly flexible. This is the best time that you can apply it to any curved pieces that you might have. While my molds are nice and soft, I know that I need to drill out the center for my hardware holes to go through, so I'm going to go ahead and use my screw gun and just drill a hole out in the center of my mold. Alright, I've got my hardware backings all detached from the molds, um, and I drilled the holes out of the middle while they're nice and soft. They're super easy to drill. And now I'm going to go ahead and coat it in a little bit of spray paint. I'm actually going to do a base of one that has a primer in it just for nice coverage, and then I'll add that light metallic over the top. Once my hardware backings are nice and dry and my spray paint is nice and dry, I wanna go ahead and bring out some of these details. The spray paint is not the exact same color as the back of my hardware, and I wanna make them a closer match. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of a white gold gilding wax from Art Basics. This is from, I'm sorry, from Art Alchemy. This is from Redesign with Prima. And I'm just going to dip my finger in a little bit of it. And I'm going to rub it over the top of my mold and it's going to bring out all of those details. Once that's all done, this is about what I come out with. Now I want to go ahead and apply it to my drawer. So I'm going to apply a little bit of Type Bond Quick and Thick Adhesive. Just a thin layer to the back of my hardware. I'm going to spread that out using my finger, just making sure I get it all the way to the edges so I get nice contact with my furniture piece. Now this one's also really cute. It has little holes in it where you could apply it with little uh, screws or nails and that would look even more authentic. And then I'm going to apply it right over where I drilled my hole. I'm going to apply it right over the hole for my hardware. And I'm going to actually use my hardware to hold this onto my piece. So I'll put my hardware in. I'm going to put the washer on and then the nut on the back and I'm going to tighten that and that's going to hold this hardware in place and it's going to use the, the hole on the mold and my screw are going to be what centers this onto my drawer. I did choose to use a slightly smaller mold for these top drawers because I felt like the larger one kind of overpowered them. It was a little long for the length of the drawer itself and I'm also 
um, applying my molds when they're a little bit soft because then I can mold it. This is a curved drawer front and I can mold it to the curve of my drawer. So when I'm done, you can see this is what my hardware is going to look like. And it looks like this gorgeous decorative drop pull compared to just the plain drop pull, which is also really pretty. But this looks like authentic vintage hardware. Here are some side-by-side -side photos of the original knobs versus the ones with my molded backs. I think they look like authentic vintage hardware and it definitely adds some interest to these poles. They're really pretty on their own, but definitely more pretty with the backs added. That little bit of gilding wax made them a perfect match to the metal on the knob. My final finishing touch on this piece is gonna be to go ahead and moisturize this old wood in these drawers. And I'm gonna use Furniture Staff from Wiesel. And the scent I'm using is Lemon Verbena. It is probably the most universal. It's their original scent. This one never disappoints. And I'm gonna use their Saf brush to apply it. I'm just gonna dip a little bit onto my brush. And then I'm gonna massage it into this old wood. This stuff spreads on so easily. A little bit goes a long way. And I actually like to do the entire inside of my piece. So not only will I do inside of my drawer box, but I'll also take it out, do the outside of my drawer boxes. You can see I'm still using the original dip into my brush and I'm getting plenty of salve on here. I'm going to go over this side stencil that we applied and then I'm also going to get inside my piece and do where those drawers would glide and get all that nice and smooth and smelling good. And then when I put this all back together, you can see the difference between that old wood and the new wood. It's just soaking up that moisture into the old wood. These side-by-side -side photos show what a difference that little bit of salve made to this wood. I like to make sure all the finishing touches are done and customers really notice these things. For the body of my piece, I applied a wax finish to seal my paint, but for the top, I'm actually gonna use this matte clear coat from Annie Sloan. And this stuff is gorgeous, you guys. I first wanna show you how nice and luxuriously thick this is. I love applying a nice and thick clear coat. So I am gonna give it a little bit of a stirring, making sure I pull up from the bottom, but there's nothing really down there. It's nice and well mixed, already coming out of the container. And then I'm gonna apply it using a blue sponge. I have these in my Amazon shop. Uh, this is a slightly damp. And I'm gonna dip it into the mouth of my container just to cover the surface of my sponge just about that much. And then I'm gonna start in the center of my piece and I'm gonna pull from one side and then to the other side. I'm gonna dip my sponge again, start in the center from one side to the other side. And where they overlap, I wanna make sure that I don't have any overlapping lines. A nice, smooth, even coat. I usually do about four coats on a top. If I'm doing a body in clear coat, I'll apply usually two coats to a body and four coats to a top. So I'm going to go ahead and finish wiping on this top, a nice smooth coat of clear, and this is going to be nice and sealed. The reason I'm choosing clear coat for the top is because I want this to be extra durable and have that extra coat of protection because the top is the most used part of the piece. The body's going to get less finger wear, um, and this is going to be a nice durable sealer for that top. And it also, using a flat clear coat, keeps the wood the closest to its natural color that I've found. It is staging day on this piece and I just used a few simple baskets and some rustic decor to bring out the wood tones and the natural elements in the piece. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and all the details that we added to this furniture piece. If you did, you can find links for everything we used in the description for this post. As always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. Don't forget to click that subscribe button.